Hello and welcome back to another out of spec detailing video. Today we've got the Rivian R1S in the shop, nice and dirty. So we've actually filmed a video how to properly wash your Rivian R1T. Today we're gonna do it with the R1S. Show a little bit of differences between the T and the S, um, maybe some areas to look out for because we've definitely have some more room for paint on this one. So Kyle has been giving this thing the proper Rivian taken off road, get it nice and dirty. And I think this one's gonna be important to talk about because a lot of you guys are taking these things on amazing adventures, which is really cool. But when maintaining these, there's a lot of things to think about as far as washing. So in this video, we're gonna talk car wash mode, how to set it in that mode, how to wash wheel wells, the proper way to lift the vehicle up, properly clean those, and then wheels as well, because Rivians have, can have very tiny wheels, um, but huge brakes on it. So getting in behind all those nooks and crannies can be very tricky. Most importantly, talking again, wash process. We've got a lot of dirt and grime on here, a lot of contamination lots of um, chances to actually scratch the paint. Rivian Blue on this one, you wanna make it look as good as possible. So let's jump into the wash process and look through this vehicle. Colton, how are you, sir? Fantastic. Hey, good to see you. Nice for you to uh, go through and bring us through this process again. We did the R1T video previously. I think uh, if you've already watched that one, well, a lot of the same things we'll be talking about here, but very R1S specific, talking about just the doors are a little bit different length. We got yeah. more badges, got some weird things going on here. Yep, yeah, definitely, obviously, this is very similar from about this point forward. Um, as you cross the B pillar, this is all new. So we don't have tonneau covers to deal with, things like that. Um, but specifically talking about maybe door jams, especially in the back, because it's really picking up a lot of dirt and grime back there. Now, like we said before, you have been just shredding this thing off road, taking it in and out, trying to really see the capability of this truck. And we've got some dirt, I really like to see that. But the big thing here is this is kind of a scary situation as far as the paint because we've got a lot of dirt and it's really easy to scratch this. So I'm already noticing if you pull in here, again, this is always one of the hotbeds here and we've just got dirt falling out of everywhere. That is crazy. And one thing we've talked about multiple times and this is this piece of paint protection film or PPF that Rivian has installed, but they did not wrap the edges on this piece yep. here. So we wanna be extra careful with that. Definitely. And I've seen a lot of those lifting quite a bit. Um, actually, we we're at a Rivian meetup earlier today, got to see the full Expel stealth wraps on some of these trucks which was really cool to see in person, talk to the owners, see what they liked about that. Um, what I'm also wanted to kind of mention about is this $4,500 full vehicle wrap to turn your car stealth. So explain that for Rivian reservation holders or just the general people who may not know what the heck is going on there. Yeah, so Rivian and Expel. So Expel is a film manufacturer that makes the actual paint protection film that goes on these vehicles. They've partnered together and basically came out with this package saying we can turn your gloss um, Rivian into a stealth Rivian. A lot what's entailed with that, and I talked to a few owners today, so they've taken their cars in. When you go that route, this cheaper alternative, because in my opinion, that's extremely, extremely cheap to have a full wrap done. When you and I heard about that $4,500 yeah, price, us. we were like, what the heck is going yeah. on here? And how does this help the industry at all? Then we learned a little bit more about the process and it's not as in depth, but the $4,500 is for stealth or gloss is Correct. my yep. understanding. Yeah, I think most people, I, from what I, have heard and seen is that they're doing the stealth. But yeah, that does include gloss and stealth as well. The interesting thing that they're not doing is wrapping edges, not pulling badges off. So like here in this area, from what I understand, what this $4,500 package is doing is basically using a pre-cut piece of film, installing it on there, not wrapping edges. That can be kind of tricky when you have a stealth wrapped vehicle because you're gonna have these gloss strips going down everywhere. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Can you show what an edge might be and where they might not wrap it? Is that this entire piece or is it just those little bits there? Exactly, so um, that's kind of the tricky thing with this. And I think it's gonna come down to what shop are you having install this film? Um, maybe a lot of shops are not even sort of wrapping this. They may say, okay, let's add another thousand, another 2000 to wrap every single edge and then get into that craziness. So that $4,500, as good as it sounds, 
may not be as good as it actually so sounds. So you're saying even though Rivian is advertising the $4,500 PPF package, yep. and they're saying here are the list of installers that have signed up and agreed to do that package, they may also say, hey, you're here, do you want your truck to look nicer and upsell them on a better exactly. install? So I talked to two specific Rivian owners today, both an R1T and an R1S. What they told me for their full stealth wrap on them, they were both launch edition green colors. They were both upwards of $8,000 for the full wrap. The R1T had all of the, the rear pieces on it popped off, film tucked underneath, replaced, because those are all single use um, clips on those from what I understand. And that was a really nice install. Oh, very, very nice. Um, extremely nice. So what we'll they, do a whole video on that truck actually. I, I yeah, absolutely. Up. And what a great owner, it was amazing talking to him and he was just thrilled with it. He wanted my input, it was like, hey, I want another nerd to look at this thing and tell me like, is this really good? Is it horrible? It was, I was pretty blown away to be honest. But stuff like that, again, they're not taking off badges. So when you're paying for more, they're taking the badges off, wrapping film on and then replacing them, which is in my opinion, really the way to do it. The other one that I saw, they were using pre-cut film up here. And from what I've already noticed, didn't fit the greatest. So mm. some things to like talk about there. I think when you're paying the extra money, um, it, it's definitely worth it. So um, as far as paint protection film, kind of an interesting thing that Rivian is doing with Expel together. Yeah, that's super neat. And uh, obviously this truck, the reason we brought it up was because it comes with PPF already in certain areas. And so, you know, the R1T had the gear tunnel PPF, which on my truck is already turning yellow. It's yeah. really not my and favorite material. Every edge is peeling on your truck. Like, it, yeah, it looks pretty bad. It looks be terrible. And so eventually we're going to be removing that and wrapping the truck, the entire truck yep. for something, you know, just something to make it look good on YouTube. But where did Rivian put PPF on this? Obviously this piece right here, but is that literally it? I think it is um, on this specific one. Now this is a press vehicle. This is not a client's car. Um, I haven't, I mean, we only have seen really only other R1S in the wild other, the one that we saw today, but that was full stealth wrap. Yep. So all I have seen on this so far is just underneath right there. Right. And this, uh, vehicle is VIN 140 for those wondering. Yep. So it's a really early one, but you know, definitely no PPF up here on the front. Still nothing going on like that. Um, now who knows what Rivian will do down the line in the future. I have heard maybe them coming from the factory with PPF yep. in certain areas as options or as standard. Let's just take a look in the back sure. here to make sure that there's no extra PPF. I'm not seeing anything to be honest. No, I don't either. Um, yeah, I even on the sides, which I'm kind of curious because these doors are kind of similar to the T's, how they kind of poke out once you get to the rear kind of hips of the vehicle. No film there. So it's kind of interesting that they didn't do that on this. Yeah, and honestly, I think it's for the better. I think the less PPF from the factory, the, the more the paint can sweat, the more everything can adhere to it, and there's less chance for things to look ugly only after a few months. Yep. Because, I mean, if you think about it, this is a production line, literally taking a pre-cut piece of film, throw it on there, squeegee it out, send it on its way. You and know? We've, we've done a lot of videos <laughs> on Rivians, and I've seen your green Rivian, the one you did the full you know, new car prep on, and just the difference of installation from left to right was crazy. Oh, it was massively different. Um, now, that truck, and probably quite controversial, we pulled all the PPF off, and he's been running it without any PPF. So without it behind the wheel and without it on the gear guard. I'm not a PPF guy. Kyle and I still need to sit down and make this huge PPF nerd out video talking <laughs> about that because I think it's really important to have the conversation. Um, but what I've been doing with my clients is talking, how are you using the vehicle? And that's it, what it really comes down to it is, is the money spending it on that worth it over say doing a paint correction polish and just driving the car? And enjoying it. So let's talk about, you know, approaching this vehicle, which is how it came to us, which is how I think the majority of people are going to be keeping it, which is no PPF straight from the factory and just using it as a daily vehicle. Yep. Um, and that's really what we're going to go through and wash it front to back. So let's go through your wash process and yep. uh, see what that all consists of. Obviously, you've got some pretty cool gear over here. Yeah, we've got some crazy gear. So let's first start there. Um, so I use the three bucket method. Now you've heard of the two bucket method. What we're adding in is a dedicated wheel bucket. 
This is actually extremely important because wheels and brakes produce a lot of contamination. You don't wanna be mixing these with buckets of water that are going on your paint, risking scratching the actual finish. Um, the wheel buckets here, especially like brake dust is just atrocious. So we've got the black bucket, bucket here. I've also got the rinse bucket and wash bucket. So the rinse bucket is a clean water, so there's no soap in it. Um, most importantly, I'll have Kyle come over here and show you these specific tools. So these are pretty cool. This is actually the wash bucket. Um, so this is going to be soap and water in it. Now, this is an important piece in here. This is called a grit guard. What this does, essentially, you've seen how this truck looks. It's really filthy. So when we come in here rinsing this thing down, we're gonna come back in here, kind of scrub it. What this is gonna do is keep all the dirt and contamination that we're pulling off the paint into the bottom of here, not allowing it to go back into your wash mitt, scrubbing dirt and sand everywhere. Again, like this thing is absolutely filthy right now. I've seen dirtier Rivians, but there's a lot of chance for scratching. So we really wanna minimize that. Now coming over here, this is about the most OCD spec um, pressure washer setup out there. Which not a normal person doesn't need no. this, but everyone wants this. This is really cool. Yeah. Heavily inspired by Obsessed Garage, I imagine. Yep. Yeah, really cool. Yep, so we've got the Kranzla pump up here, the workhorse of the shop. We've got Cox reels here with the just incredible um, pressure washer hoses here. And down here, which is kind of interesting, this is a fully filtered system. Um, so basically, I turn this on. You can actually see it's still pressurized and on right now, which I normally don't do. Um, but this is pure tap water and then filter, filtered water. So on my final rinse, I'm not worried about it getting a lot of water spots, anything like that. Lastly, this is a crazy good tool too. This is the blow car dryer. So getting all of the water rinsed out and blown out of all of the nooks and crannies in this vehicle, these have quite a bit of them. So this is kind of important to use as well. It's literally a blow dryer. <laughs> yeah, blow car dryer. <laughs> That's awesome. And this may be a tool too. This is something I don't normally use, um, but this may be a good tool to use for the top of the vehicle. We've got full glass on this thing. So you put a wash mitt on here and you can scrub the top glass safely without having to get on a ladder, get like really into it. Cause these are pretty tall. I mean, I'm six feet tall and me reaching up to the center of the glass, this is in kneel mode right now, I believe. Yep. I mean, it's up there. I can't even reach the center of the glass. So something like that is pretty critical to be able to wash areas like that. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, I would say let's hose her down. So show us how we're gonna raise this thing up, Colton. Yeah, first off, one of the biggest things before washing, make sure all your windows are up because I just noticed that back window's cracked. There we go. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. All right, so we're gonna come into here. I'm gonna put it into neutral. Kyle needs to remind me how to do that. You got it, you just gotta hold it longer. Nope, just to the middle setting, just like your Tesla. Do you know how to put your Tesla in no. the neutral? There we go, so it was up and just hold it. <laughs> yeah, you can go up or down as oh, long as okay. you hold it to that halfway point. So we're gonna go into off-road mode here, go off-road and put it in the highest. And you're off the brakes in neutral. That yep. way there's, you know, the suspension can move. We're not pushing against the parking brake, clamping things down. Um, and it sometimes takes a little while. By the way, for those of you who want to know, to know if you've reached the height, this little bit, where's my finger right there? that will stop flashing when you've reached the height. Yeah, and you can already hear the compressor kicking on. I don't think you guys can probably hear that. Through the mics. Yeah, but it's substantially, and it's vibrating. Like, the whole seat is vibrating right now. Yeah, it reverberates through the whole cabin. I mean, I just think they really should have put in isolation box or, in, or a blanket around it or something, but maybe that would have reduced its thermal performance. I'm not totally sure. But um, yeah, so we'll let this raise up. Once we're there, you'll throw it back into park and then we'll do the wheels. Perfect. Monster truck mode activated here and uh, Colton is jumping out. <laughs> Goodness, that's a little bit different. It stopped flashing and then it went back on. So I don't know if it still needs to build more. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it'll go on its own at this point. It's got most of it done. So the big reason I wanted to do this is I wanna talk cleaning wheel wells because these often get overlooked. These are kind of, as you think about the armpits of the car, right? So really dirty areas, see a lot of dirt and grime. 
you know, Colorado winters, off-roading, whatever it may be. I'm gonna show you how to quickly clean this. It's really pretty simple and straightforward. So I think first off, let's get our wash buckets ready to rock and roll and get this one wheel cleaned here. Yeah, cool. So we've got Adam's car shampoo here going into the wheel bucket. It's really nice to be able to have a little bit of lubrication going in there um, on the wheel bucket as well. So I'm gonna bring this over to my bucket fill here. And Colton, what's your opinion on wheel specific soaps? Um, I haven't really played with them, to be honest. I, that's the same soap that I use in the buckets for the paint. Um, I kind of treat them the same way. The biggest thing is I just keep the wheel bucket separate from the um, bucket that touches the paint. Maybe in other videos we can test different soaps on wheels. That could be a fun one. Yeah, I think so. And you've got the best bucket fill situation. It's so nice. Here. It just fits so perfectly. And the really good thing is you can kind of modulate, okay, I want more foam, I need more water, because it's really important to get kind of a good in-between and not have just like only soap, right? You want to have some water in there for lubrication and cleaning. Well, what the heck are you doing over here, Colton? Okay, so this is one of my <laughs> favorite tools here. So what this essentially is, so I've got PNS Brake Buster in here. This is a really, really nice cleaner. There's a few reasons I really like this and use it a lot. Number one, it really eats up dirt and grime, specifically on wheels. Number two is I deal with a lot of cars that come through the shop with carbon ceramic brakes. This is the specific cleaner for that. I have an alternative cleaner that is basically an iron deposit remover for wheels because you produce a lot of brake dust, but this is really best case scenario for this because we've got a lot of dirt and grime. So this is the IK foam sprayer. And what you heard when that clip started is the um, pressure release valve. So this has 60 PSI of air in it, basically shooting foam onto this, which is just really, really cool. Now you can hand pump that if you need to as well, but the quick connect <laughs> is just so nice. Quick connect and just like, yeah, it, it's the way to go. Cause you're gonna sit here just pumping this thing all day. Now on this wheel, these are pretty filthy. One of the biggest things that I would normally do if the, if the car just had a little bit of brake dust and grime, I would spray this down um, with the IK sprayer. What I wanna do is pre-rinse. You're gonna hear that a lot, especially with this vehicle because it's very, very dirty. We don't wanna introduce a lot of scratches into it. So I'm gonna come over here and get the pressure washer going. And we'll talk about this. I wanna make a point every single time I wash a car on these. These things, when they go into here, if you do not get them clicked in right, can become a bullet, essentially. So what I always do, anytime I spray on a vehicle, go down and then come onto it because this can be just a crazy projectile. And believe me, I've had them do that. Luckily, only hit tires, but just still not one of those things you wanna deal with. And what, what angle are you going with? What is that tip you're using there? This is the 25 degree tip. It's a little bit stronger. Normally I use the 40 degree, but we've got a lot of dirt and grime to get off here. So I'm gonna bump it up a little. Turn the Kranzla on. That thing just sounds healthy. Yeah, it, it still does. I still haven't changed the oil in it, which I really need to do. <laughs> um, so I'm wondering how long it lasts like that. All right, so we're gonna start with the pre-rinse and Kyle asked me if we could get this lettering off of here. Cause I know we'll probably Run, you guys will run into this with your Rivians. But Kyle, come in here and look at the dirt and grime all over the suspension already. Yeah, wow, looking real good, actually. Yeah. <laughs> That's how a Rivian should look, Colton. Absolutely, but we wanna make sure that we don't leave that to get really, really nasty, especially in the winter time, because in Colorado here, we've got a lot of salt on the roads, really, really nasty stuff. So let's start off with just an initial rinse. initial rinse done. So I'm actually kind of curious to clean these wheels because my dad's got an R1T on order and these are the wheels he has fallen in love with. And I think they're pretty cool. I know Kyle, you're not the biggest fan of these, right? Oh, I really don't like them at all, yeah. 
yeah. especially the ones that are gray, black and silver, but that's the thing with wheels, it's very personal preference. Yep. Absolutely. So what I just sprayed on here was Gion Tire Cleaner. So this is really good to get in there and really clean the tire. What I also like about my Brake Buster is it's good at cleaning rubber. What I'm adding in this is Simple Green. This is a really nice, effective product for cleaning areas like this that are a little bit dirty and grimy. Um, and what we're gonna do is let this dwell. Big thing with chemicals is letting them dwell for an extended period of time, letting them work. If you just spray it on and immediately start going, you're not getting the full effective cleaningness of the product. This is extremely cool though, because what this does is foams this down, creating a nice thick layer of foam to help it stick on there. Because a lot of the times if you just spray these wheel cleaners on here, they go on and drip off pretty much immediately. So this is a really cool tool. Is it necessary? Eh, I don't really think so, but I go through so much wheel cleaner that this is just an ideal way to do it. And you'll notice here, one of the big things, again, just like the wheel arches here, is that they don't get cleaned often. I'm gonna get all in here, show you guys how to do that, because it's very important. You can always come in here, spray this down with Brake Buster as well. So you got Simple Green and Brake Buster. Yep as a layer inside. Just gonna kind of create a nice cleaning effect here. So let's talk tools here. What I always start off with is the tires. Now let me find my tire brush. It's always a little tricky finding them, but this is a pretty stiff bristled brush. What I'm gonna come in here and do, just scrub down the tread. These are some nice meaty treads on here. And you wanna keep this off the wheel face. If you touch it, it's not the end of the world, but it's definitely, not something that you want to use on the face of the wheels. So you'll notice it turning kind of brown. These are not super, super dirty, um, but even new trucks I do this on before I apply tire shine because the mold release in here, they turn really nasty and brown. Kind of important to clean that off. So what I'm gonna do now. And really the only person to have these wheels on this truck before us was uh, Zach from Jerry Rig Everything. Oh, very cool. Yeah, so Zach had it and then we got it. So they don't really have that many miles on them at all. Right. So what I'm gonna come in here and do is do this with a brush. Now this is a safe brush that is not gonna destroy the black wheels. Um, you do wanna make sure you keep these clean because if you are cleaning very dirty wheels like these are, you can introduce scratches if you're not maintaining your tools. Um, but it's pretty nice to be able to get in all these nooks and crannies. I'm gonna show you another trick that I actually prefer using to the wheel brush, but figured a lot of guys use this, so wanted to put it in the video. Now, this is one of my tricks here, is we come in with a cheap microfiber towel. I get these from Sam's Club, I buy them in huge packs, I single use these, throw them away. So this allows you to really get in there in all the really tight nooks and crannies using your finger to be able to move this around where the brush couldn't get to. It's just such an effective way to clean, flip it around when it gets a little dirty. Yeah, get everywhere in there, right? Yeah, these are very spoky too compared to like your 22s on um, your truck. But you've had a chance now to work with the standard 20 inch all-terrain, which is the standard face versus this. Yeah. The 21s and the 22s. And which wheel do you think is the easiest to clean of the Rivian lineup? Road wheels for sure. Um, because you have a bigger wheel and it's a lot easier to get into these areas here. Hmm. But this is a great tool. This is called a wheel woolly. Or actually I think these are the easy detail brushes. The wheel woolies are the other ones. What's nice with these is you can come in here and get all the way to the back of the wheel, releasing all of that dirt and grime. And, and it the gets the back of the caliper. Exactly. And I've got multiple different brushes that I use throughout the detailing here. And you can even come up here in the other spokes. Oh, these that's are nice that you can even get up, you know, through that top portion as yeah, well. Yeah, these are extremely nice to be able to clean. Um, actually, I'm gonna say these are quite a bit easier to clean because of this kind of cutout here. You can get yeah. in there. Now, the tricky thing is gonna be behind this huge chunk of uh, metal on the wheel there. So I'll show you a trick for that as well. So what we can do now is come in here. It's always a pain trying to find these brushes. So this is a smaller version. Why I like this, you can go directly in here 
We've got this one curved a little bit. Come in here, just make sure you're getting all the back because these really get missed quite often. Yeah, and especially when off-roading, if you're in sand or snow or mud, you actually get a buildup of material in these wheels quite easily, I've noticed. Yeah. And it throws the alignment off. And oh, so, that's um, a great point to mention too. Yeah, I've noticed it just with the dirt the other day. We had it in some slush, snow, and mud, and I'm like, mm, I wish these wheels had a bit more release area for the stuff that's inside. So sure. good idea to just hit it with a pressure washer, a couple wheel woolies, and then at least you're, you won't have that out of balance problem. Right, and so the last tool, the last thing that I like to do here is come in here with a little lug nut brush, hit the lug nuts really quickly, come in here, hit that Rivian badge, make it look, nice and pretty and get as close as you can to these brake calipers. Now, what you can do in this is rotate the wheel forward so that you can hit that area because it's definitely a little bit tricky to get into. You can also attempt to come in here with a towel. There's and, not much space there. Yeah, though. look how tight this is. I mean, yeah. come on in here. This is a really low clearance situation. Yeah, extremely so, low. Yeah, so like rocks, you might hear a big pop or something and it'll just scratch the face of that. Yeah, the rotor there. Definitely. Or, yeah, I should say the caliper. So let's quickly talk um, wheel well. I'm going to show you how to do this really quickly. This is not an every wash thing. Uh, it is definitely overkill. If you're that kind of guy, I appreciate the heck out of you. Yeah, so you had mentioned in the last video, maybe once a month, once every two months, doing the simple yep. green yep. wheel well situation. Exactly. So I've got another different brush. So I wouldn't want to use the same brush on the face of the wheels that I'm using here. Okay. Cross contamination, getting it really dirty. But it's really simple. Just come in here and we're just knocking down this dirt. Um, again, having the truck at the highest level. I say truck, I understand this is the SUV. I just love calling this thing a truck because it looks so awesome. Close enough, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it's pretty as simple as this. You just come in, you can kind of cross hash it, just making sure you don't miss any of these areas. Try and clean up the suspension components because I was noticing a lot of dirt and grime sitting in between the airbag there mm. and really don't want to see that. I could imagine that may end up puncturing something like that. Um, I believe that's just a sleeve, but yeah. yeah, let's keep our components nice. Yeah, no, that's good practice for sure. Yeah, a lot of just keeping a vehicle clean also, you know, like you had mentioned, just really prevents over time wear and tear yeah. with bearings and bushings and everything. Yeah. yeah. Keeping it rinsed down looking good. So I think we're at the point we got the wheel cleaned up. We got the wheel well done. Um, let's start with our rinse. Noticing we didn't get that off. So Wait. we may have to play with that a little bit later. Not if you're the end curious. of the world. That'll just come off with time as well, those yeah. little things. All right, so we've got this cleaned up now. Um, I, I think it's, I love seeing dirty Rivians, but I think it's really nice to be able to go through and clean these. Look how much nicer that suspension looks. Looks yeah. nice and clean ready to go get dirty again. Wheels nice and cleaned as well. Those barrels were really bad. I don't know, may want to show them a nice 50-50 yeah. shot here yeah, of how idea. filthy those were. Yeah, just huge piles of crap in here. <laughs> but as it should be, I mean, these things are meant to get dirty. And honestly, in my opinion, even though they're quite big vehicles, they're relatively easy to clean. A lot of flat surfaces, just sort yeah. of being mindful every time you touch it seems to be the name of the game. Absolutely. Um, so I think off camera, we'll clean up the rest of the wheels. Um, don't want to just keep showing that over and over. It's the same process on every corner. Pretty simple. Again, you're going to spend five to 10 minutes, depending on how intricate you want to get on this. I think it's important to do every so often. Again, talking rocks, sticking on there, getting, throwing off the wheel alignment, um, or balance on there. That may be something to consider if you start feeling jittery vibrations in there. I think next we're gonna lower this thing down and start the actual wash process. Great, that sounds good. I've just gone through and cleaned the wheels. I know you were about to do that, but I beat you to the punch <laughs> yeah. and uh, I finished them off. How did I do, Colton? Honestly, pretty darn good. It's really- You sound surprised. Yeah, no, not really. <laughs> I know Kyle's kind of a OCD nerd like I am. He's done kind of like the, he understands the whole wash process. So it's cool to work with somebody who understands that. but. Having the right tools is really, really important. You could spend, I don't know, maybe a hundred bucks, have a full wheel cleaning setup, 
you can use them for years. I use these brushes day in, day out, never really replace them. Yeah, totally agree. So this thing's looking real dirty. So are we ready yeah. to get to the fun part? Cause wheels suck. Yeah, wheels take forever. Um, these were filthy too, so. <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. Next, and this is why I love Rivian's, is being able to have the air suspension, being able to clean all that. Now we can slam it all the way down, be able to reach the roof, all the areas, and then most importantly, put it in car wash mode, and we'll show how to do that. Kyle, I'm gonna have you hop around the other side. Sure. Here I go. Alyssa's ready to take some nice photos. You got your pro camera around? Somewhere over there. All right, and have to be in the vehicle. Oh, it's so high up yeah, here. Yeah, it's way different, <laughs> right? All right, so brake on. We're gonna go with sport, lower hide right, and neutral. hide right. Nope. You just have to hold it. There you go, feel it unlock there. Yeah, it really stops it binding up there. So now we're gonna go into car wash mode. And you can hear the air purge back there. So we've got the little truck icon here. And we're gonna go up here to access and security, click it on. Oh boy. Why is car wash mode important? Mostly because charge port, anytime you hit that thing with water, it's just like tries to come up. You don't wanna be shooting a ton of high pressure water, especially into the charge port. Not a good plan. Right, and then if you happen to run it through a, a belt driven car wash, which we typically recommend touchless washes, those are fine. I take my truck through a touchless, yep. but uh, the brush ones, eh, not so great. Um, it will at least let the truck stay in neutral. Yep, absolutely. And you can go conserve or sport to go into the lowest suspension. Okay, perfect. Yep. So we're gonna put it in park now because we're already done, stopped flashing, we're in lowest mode. And what's weird is we just purged all that air out and it's now recharging the air compressor. Yeah, it's, I feel like this truck, I don't know whether, I'd be curious to know if the air compressor in S is smaller than T. It almost sounds like it. This thing runs nonstop back there. Constant. Yeah. All right, well, let's go wash this thing. Out we go. Oh, much lower to the ground now. <laughs> so much better. Look at that, full slammed action right here. Looking okay. nice. Biggest thing on this, we've got a ton of contamination. So what we're gonna do, full rinse down first. I'm gonna foam it, I'm gonna let it sit on there, really eat away that dirt. So let's jump into that process now. So I'm using regular tap water over here if you guys happen to have this insane setup, which would be really cool. And so um, why wouldn't you use DI water, DI NOS water, water for this type of stuff? For one, you don't need it um, because you are using pH neutral soap. So it kind of does something similar to the filtration system. And it's just kind of wasteful because these filters do get expensive. It depends where you're at. I change these about once a year. I wash cars all year long. There's quite a few cars through the shop here, but if you're living in Arizona, places like that with really horrible water, you're gonna be going through these things constantly. So, mm. and how um, do you know when they're ready to get changed? Yeah, actually, so if you come over here, we can show this later on too, but um, actually this may need to get changed soonish because it's showing a little bit of minerals. It may need to cycle through, so we'll see. Sure. But you turn that on, it should say zero. If it starts going up, you need to change the resin in there or get new cartridges. And what's the highest you've seen it go? Um, here it never gets that high. I think I've seen like 14 here, okay, which yeah. is not a lot. Um, I mean, you can see so others that are just like- So anything less than 20 is still safe? Yeah, uh, well, technically it should just be zero though. Okay, got it. Because so it'll we filter want zero. everything out. Yeah. Makes sense. Yep, exactly. So again, starting off high pressure rinse. Um, I'm so gonna you're rinse. rinsing before foam? Yep, I'm gonna do that just to dislodge everything because like there's a lot on here. Yeah, a lot of dirt and grime. I'm gonna get my wheel chocks. These are just like the single greatest thing ever for mm. a detailing product. Cause these big chunky wheels like to hold these in. Nice little uh, trick you got there. And matches the truck. Yeah, how about that? Look how That's much easier sweet. that is. Love it. There is no protection on this paint. Zero. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. What were you gonna say over here? Um, this holds so much. I don't remember it holding that much dirt on the R1T. I think it's hmm. the same panel, but 
Yeah, you can just see the dirt just like flying right out of there. So it's catching in between the paint Probably and the actual shot plastic. Shot up by the front wheel and thrown down there. Exactly. All right, so let's get this foam down. So inside here is Chemical Guys Snow Foam um, diluted. Now, I mix this pre-made in a five gallon bucket. Just so you guys know, this is a one to five dilution. So I put one gallon in, actually I guess it's technically one to four, put one gallon of snow foam in, four gallons of water, and I have it on a spigot, fill it up because I just go through so much of this soap. Hmm. And what kind of foam cannon you got there? This is the MTM uh, PF22.2, oh, I believe it nice. is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Charge board open. Charge board open, but we should be in car wash mode. What? Interesting. Go double check that to make sure we are, because it just well, came. Well, we must be because the door handles are in, but the screens are off. I think the car went to sleep. Ah. Or it could be a bug in the software because they have a new software update waiting, but that's very interesting. Okay, vehicle, car wash off, turn on. There we go. Car wash mode back on. And we locked it in the open position now. Yeah, hold on. I got to turn car wash mode <laughs> off. These door handles don't auto pop out in car wash. And I should be able to just close charge port. There it goes. Yeah, okay. What the heck? That was weird. Never yeah. seen that before. No, me neither. <laughs> We've let this dwell for a little bit, so really starting to eat that dirt up. Um, this is kind of important too, if you're washing inside or outside, I've got the ideal situation here. Closed down, it's cool in here. Sick lights. Yeah, it, you can <laughs> see everything exactly. That's obviously the purpose of the detail shop, but if you're watching, washing your Rivian R1S at home, important things to note. When it's super windy, it can be a pain in the butt because this is gonna dry really quick. Also, really trying to stay out of washing in the sun is very, very helpful to preventing water spots. Now, you can do it and just recommend that you be very quick with it. Um, next process though, what we're gonna do, we're gonna get buckets filled up here. So let's hop over here and we're gonna get our wash bucket filled first. So again, more soap coming in here. And all of this soap is totally pH neutral, right? Yeah, exactly. So this is Adam's um, car shampoo. <coughs> car shampoo, I love their stuff because DIY friendly, for you guys that don't know, they are a Colorado company based in Thornton. So if you're a Colorado Rivian owner, this is kind of cool to be able to run down to Denver and get some products for you. Yeah, you got the warehouse right down the road. Yeah, exactly. So just coming over here. Hello. <laughs> gonna get these filled up and then we're gonna actually start, um, I'm gonna wash the top first as this has sat with the brush and then we're gonna re-rinse this down, re-foam it, start the hand wash process. Most importantly, we need wash mitts and those are over in my washer or actually in the dryer over here. Really important to keep these clean as well. I go through so much laundry here at the shop so I actually wash these every single time that they touch a car and then they come back out of the dryer ready to go fresh and clean. Mm, very nice. And what kind of wash mitts are you using here? I believe these are chemical guys. These are like a chenille. Um, I really like these instead of like those furry ones they are kind of nasty to use. And I use this for lower plastic pieces. So I keep these separate. Again, trying to keep as much scratching off the car as possible. And we'll have a link to the rag company where you can purchase rags and wash mitts and a whole bunch yep. of stuff. Yep, absolutely. So we've kind of let this sit too long. Um, we were taking some photos and stuff and filming. Um, so I'm actually gonna rinse this off. As you can see, it's almost dry. I'm not really worried about that though, because this car shampoo is pH neutral. So I can rinse it off and not have any streaking or issues like that. And we're inside, it's not baking into the exactly. sun. But outside, we would be freaking out if Yeah, was... we'd be like, okay, scramble mode, <laughs> yeah, ready to exactly. go. Yeah. So I'm again gonna come in. I'm gonna use a 40 degree tip here because I already saw a lot of that dirt came off pretty easily. Um, so I'm just gonna switch that out and start the rinse process. Cool. Rinse down again and time for second foam. So this is when we're gonna actually start touching the paint 
Is this overkill? Yes, but that's kind of the point. The whole point of detailing and going to this level of nerdiness is making sure we're not scratching the paint while we're actually washing it. That's a really, really important maintenance step for this. So again, just foaming down, there's no exact method, uh, rhyme or reason for this. I like to typically do top down. So I do one side and then flip to the other side, be quite a, kind of efficient with it as well. And I'm a bottom up kind of guy. Are you? Yeah, because I don't know, my thinking is, okay, I want to get the dirtiest bits first and then work my way up. Well, for washing, that is definitely true. Once we start doing wash mitts, right? So you always wash top down, uh, but as far as foaming, either way is fine, I would say. Okay, got it. Dude, be careful with that thing. <laughs> yeah, look at this thing. This is just, I've had some big trucks in here lately that are like lifted and you can't even see the top of the roof. So these come in clutch. Again, noticing this is the same exact thing as my wash mitt. So we'll use this exactly the same and this is perfect for taller areas. Now, do I love using this thing? Not really, um, but it is what it is. We're gonna try and keep it off the paint as much as possible, um, especially down the sides, but it's really effective at cleaning these windshields because they are really tricky to reach. So is there any paint on the roof? There is actually in between the glass panels back here, it looks like. Yeah, a little strip of paint because you have that big glass panel and then the rear one. I wonder if that big glass panel is the same one from the R1T. It almost feels like the same size for sure. Definitely not sure. Yeah, I would think they tried to reuse as many components as possible. You would think so, for sure. Yeah. All but right. Definitely, so our viewers should go and... <laughs> Hello. Our viewers Stuff should go and everywhere. check out the full evaluation on this because some of the trim isn't lining up. And this is an early production car, but like, mm, definitely seems like maybe they should have kept it a bit more simple. Yeah, for sure. All right, so we're going to start our wash process here. We are coming out of the rinse bucket into the wash. So we're going to go straight water into the soap. We're going to start on the hood. This is always the easiest place to start. Again, this is kind of a big vehicle. I'm six feet tall and this is a little hard to reach the middle of the hood. I'm going to stay off the actual black plastic here and come in with that other mitt as we talked about before. And I'm going to flip over here and come to this side. Not a lot of bugs on this one that you found. <laughs> right, I think well, it's, it's also getting colder outside, exactly. so the bugs are dying off. Yeah, and these things, if you guys don't know, are magnets for bugs in summertime. Your truck has some serious, serious bugs on it. Yeah, my truck's pretty brutal, but we are getting into winter, which means I think problems with these headlights here. They don't output heat and they build up ice, so we're thinking maybe a ceramic coat, even just on the headlight or a wax on the headlight or something, to help with ice buildup because it really does affect light output performance in the snow driving conditions. Cause you've driven this, I know, and a few times you said that you had to like get out and defog it, right? Yeah, or when I had it. the R1T review truck last winter, this just get, kept getting piled up, especially following other vehicles and schmutz. And yep. it was sometimes, you know, 10, 12, 15 minutes of driving. I was oh, wow. getting out and wiping these things, keeping a roll of paper towels in the truck. It was pretty brutal. All right, I'm gonna flip over here. And what's your impression of the size of R1S? Do you think it's a bit more manageable than R1T or does it not make much of a difference? It definitely feels different because you've got a lot more space here, obviously. Mm -hmm. This shorter, shorter wheelbase. This rear door feels a lot bigger to me. Yeah, it's like a limo door, obviously. It is. <laughs> so you're going into the rinse, mitt, rinse bucket first and then into the wash bucket. Yep, absolutely. Just like and then every time we come off the paint, we're gonna go into the rinse bucket and then back to the wash. Make sure you're flipping over because we don't wanna pick up that grime, put it back up here as well. Yeah, and generally straight lines, not circles on yeah. paint at least. Yeah, you really don't, you wanna avoid like trying to really scrub and get in there. That's where you put in those love marks as we call them or scratches. I'm gonna flip over to the other side and back in here. This is also kind of an interesting video for me because this is the first time 
ever washing an R1S. And we've got one on order for my wife. So I'm probably gonna be washing these things quite a bit. <laughs> That's because right. She does not wash her cars hardly at all. <laughs> and you've had a lot of Rivian owners who have booked appointments with you as well. And sort of, I think, getting to be known as like the high end Rivian, you know, not the like, let's just bring it to the shop and get it yeah. cleaned up. This is like, all right, multi-day paint protection situation, correction process. What I am just like absolutely blown away with is I have quite a few clients right now with Rivians as well that are shipping their trucks here to our Denver service center, having them detailed and going back to wherever they're from. I've got one guy coming from Washington, DC wow. to start of next year, which is just like amazing. And yeah, it just blown away with that. It's just so cool. Yeah, super neat. Yep. So show us what you're doing here with this uh, mitt situation. Yeah, so this is the kind of dirty, nasty mitt. So I save this for last. I'm gonna clean up all the trim now mm -hmm. because this holds a lot more dirt and grime than the paint, so I like to keep them separate. What's your recommendation for underbody cleaning? Ooh, I'm actually glad you mentioned that. I've got an amazing tool for it that I think we should show for rents. Okay. Cool. I don't think you've seen this. No, I never have. I've never seen you do an underbody. I've, I've just been curious. Yeah, it's really, really neat. And that's a piano black plastic under there? Yep, so I flipped it to this side yeah, to make sure that, that it's... That seems a bit scratchy. Don't love that. Yeah. Don't like that at all. Because if, for those of you who don't know, piano black is like the easiest thing to scratch yeah. in the world. Literally without a doubt. And again, here I can kind of go in with dirty mitts because we're not scratching this plastic yeah, at all. Yeah, that's just all plastic. So much dirt and grime coming out of there. That's why I save this for last because even you don't want to put it back into the wash bucket and get all the particles going everywhere. So looking good. Yeah, a little streaky, can tell it's drying a little bit on there. Yep. Again, I'm pretty quick at doing this and this vehicle, like you feel the size of it, I yeah, think. Yeah, sure. Very quickly. Yeah, it's not a smart car. No. What you can always do with this too, is say you're working outside, re-foam it down mm -hmm. while you're working on it and then you're ready to go. Let's come over to this tool though, cause this is something you haven't seen and it's really, really cool. Hmm. Oh, dang, never seen this. No. So what this is, it's got um, an insert here, got an extension pole. I'll get this all set up and show you guys how this works. This is really, really neat. So this hooks up literally like that. How about that? What a cool contraption. <laughs> that is really cool. It's like, <laughs> it's like vacuuming. Yeah, it's neat, right? <laughs> and let's take a look over here. We're back down to zero. Yeah, so we're at zero right now. So I think there was some old water sitting in there and that's why normally it needs to, to kind of- go through the filters. Needs to cycle through it, but yeah. Isn't that a cool tool? That's cool, never seen that, but that'll be really nice this winter yeah. to get all the salt off the cars. Yeah, absolutely. And that's nice here if we're not going through like a um, tunnel wash, obviously brushless, please. Um, but I really like being able to have that there. Yeah, for sure, very nice. I think at the new out of spec warehouse, I'm gonna have to get one yeah, of those. Yeah, you need one of these for sure. Yeah, because every time Judy goes out in the snow, I'm gonna wanna get, yep. get on, I'm worried about rust on that thing. Yeah, definitely. Something it, like this, I mean, having the battery under there, a lot of aluminum, not much that's gonna rust underneath this truck, but still good practice. Yeah, good to flush all the crud out, so. All right, well, I think we're gonna rinse down the paint now mm -hmm. and uh, should be on to the drying process. Alrighty. Got this rinse down now. This was a final rinse, so obviously using our deionized water, looking good. Let's talk drying methods now. What I like to do is use these really, really nice, specifically made drying towels for the paint. Um, so I'll do the paint first, hit the glass, and then last in areas like this. Can also use that in conjunction with the blow car dryer in areas to get water out. This is a drying aid. This is Adam's waterless wash. In the last video, I remember Kyle asked me, when do you use this, why do you use it? And I replied something to the fact of, I don't know, I use it sometimes and don't use it other times. That's really helpful information, Colton. Yeah, what I use this for is typically on a maintenance detail. So like this, when the car comes in and we're really trying to prevent a lot of scratching. Now, when I don't use it all the time is when a car comes in and we're doing a paint correction. So 
I use it only for that specifically. But for a general user who's not gonna be paint correcting their vehicle, probably good practice to use this. It is good practice, yeah. All it does is adds a little bit of lubrication on there um, in order to kind of, when you're wiping this, now we're not scrubbing this here. We're basically keeping it on the paint, just trying to pick up the water. And um, this is just adds another little layer on here. And also hopefully our viewers watching this video may have ceramic coated their truck or sealed it or synthetic wax or whatever material they use as something, a, you know, to fill in the pores of the paint. Yeah. And um, you know, that the water isn't gonna stick to it as much as this truck, which is completely uncoated, untreated. Yeah. What I also noticed this does is helps with a lot of water streaking. Okay. Um, I've noticed that kind of over time after we filmed that last video, I was really thinking, I was like, okay, why do I actually use that? Um, in general, what does it help with? What does it not do? And I think it really helps with streaking a lot. Hmm. Here's Colton's logo right here. Backwards. Backwards, <laughs> but it's that exact blue. So if you get an R1S, you have to get it in clear detailing blue. I think so. Um, I also like, I love white cars and I like the LA silver a lot on this. So really would Full consider Full rental that. car spec silver. Yep. Definitely with upgraded wheels. I would probably, as much as I really like these, I know Kyle loves them too. <laughs> <laughs> I would likely probably go with the 22s in full black because I think the yeah. R1S looks incredible on the 22s. I think a street spec R1S and an off-road spec R1T are the ways to go. But what's funny is the R1S is better off-road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just think it looks better in, with the 22s, specifically the black 22s. Not enough people get those. I don't, I like rarely see them. Ever. I don't think I've ever seen them uh, outside of the Rivian Service Center. Really? Yeah, never in the wild. That's pretty interesting. But again, this is a pretty simple drying process. I'm gonna have Kyle do the roof for me because yep. the glass is, especially if you're working outside. Here, let's swap um, a camera here yeah, once we're done with that. Can be very tricky. Let me get this side quickly wiped down and I'll let Kyle take over here. We're gonna swap out. I'm gonna get you a fresh towel too, cause there's gonna be a lot of standing water up there. Yeah, you wanna talk about that standing water actually and just how much, the, the roof is really complicated on this vehicle. It, it's oh five gosh. components. You have a thermoplastic, glass, thermoplastic, glass, thermoplastic. Yeah, and, and it's crazy. Kept rinsing this thing out. So this like drip rail here that holds where the hooks are for the crossbars. It was like, Kyle was standing up on the mezzanine going, you're not rinsing enough, you're not rinsing enough, there's soap everywhere. Well, and it was like, like an extra two minutes of just pushing all seriously. the soap out of the rails. Yeah. Which is pretty insane. Also is like, okay, early production days, well, the whole video, but like this stuff just isn't fitting that well and water's getting in there. And you know, this is VIN 140, but like, you know, this, this doesn't line up with that. And so just R1S things, I think. Now I feel like a fish out of water. I don't know. <laughs> what side do you want me to use, the light or the dark side? It doesn't matter. Doesn't um, matter. Either are the same, just exactly, um, yeah, they're the same. Okay, well, let's do a little start from the back and work to the front. Perfect. Just gonna do a little spray situation here. We'll put put this that down. in your pocket there, my friend. Oh, -ho, pro level tip right there. <laughs> okay, I like that. That way you don't have to keep setting stuff down. All right. I love how Kyle dries these roofs because I cannot do this, to be honest. Well, two hands. Yeah, it's a little tricky. <laughs> yeah, pretty nice. I love these towels too, because they pick up so much water. Like that is just gobs of standing water up there. Pretty amazing. And, and I think just even doing a ceramic coating on this roof and then just driving 10 miles an hour down the road yeah. <laughs> might actually be the trick. Yeah, I would agree. And we can do the glass in the same regard too. Yep, glass same way. And I'll, I'll do a little bit of a longer stretch on but the other But look at side. that towel, hold that up on yeah. the other side too. It's not soaked through even at all. No, not really. This is pretty much dry still. It's pretty, yeah. pretty incredible. I'm impressed with this towel. And you got this from the rag company? Yeah, and these towels, yes, they're expensive. Um, I do launder them every single time. So they immediately come off the cars into the washer. Um, probably need to make an entire video talking how to maintain About your laundry? microfibers. Oh, okay. yeah. I thought we were doing a different channel, which is here's how to money launder on how to spec. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a channel, another channel for another day. All right. But yeah, so uh, I just think general maintenance of your cloths and stuff. I, 
as a very much a weekend DIY kind of guy that I am, I have always pretty much thrown everything away after using them. Yeah, with and these I think nice these of, towels are like 25 bucks a piece. You don't want a single throw yeah, these Yeah, I've away. never had these nice of towels before, to be honest. And I can tell just about now I'm running out of steam and arm length for that center. The little, I'm sure there's a little backbone down yep, this thing. there is. <laughs> there okay. Is. So, um, yeah, how about I just go this way with the towel? Ah, oh, perfect. So. I love this method. I really wish I could do this. I just feel like every time an R1S comes in, I need to give Kyle a call and say, uh, hey, Kyle, can you come dry this for me? Absolutely not. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can come and help. Or just make the owner do it as part of their service. <laughs> Say, look, I'll give you a $5 discount. You just got to do the roof. Okay, that was a bad throw. Can't all have good ones here. Same like that one. It's a weird angle because I'm trying to it go. Is. It's really side. high up there though, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty crazy. So. And this you know. is in full Neil mode too, still. And it's just way up there. All right, there we go. Woo. This is a lot of water. Yep, so that's gonna directly go into the washer over there. We'll get that sure. settled down. Into the washer. Yeah, so this right here is exactly where that blow car dryer really helps out because the towel can't get in all these nooks and crannies. I mean, you can see how much water is in there. What I'll normally do on a maintenance detail like this, bring that thing in, it blows us all out. That's a heated and filtered um, uh, car dryer over there, which really, really helps. And we I, showed that in the R1T wash video. Yeah, I really don't like using air compressors because especially um, what happens in those is they get water pooled at the bottom and they create rust in there. And then that basically becomes sandblasting your paint, which is not fun at all. No, don't want to sandblast your nope. paint. What do you think of that rear cap on this thing? It, on this one, it does yeah. not fit well at all. Yeah. Um, it's kind of strange. The back end's a little strange to me, to be honest. I yeah, really I wish this piece would come up separately from the bottom mm -hmm. and this would flip down. I think it would be a lot more useful like that. But I also think if they did that, you can reach as far in. So this is kind of an in-between compromise too, I guess. Yeah, or you could just have a double uplifting thing rather than having this uh, tailgate fold down. I mean, I, I was a Range Rover enthusiast. I like the fold down tailgate. But I think it's really cool to be able to go like sit on the back of it or something. Yeah, and tailgate out of it, which is great. And then you got the lights under there. Really a, a nice truck all around. If you're interested in the reviews on this truck, head to our Out of Spec Reviews channel and we'll have all that good stuff on there. It's important too on these towels to make sure you're rotating them. Just again, minimizing scratches. That's the biggest thing you're going to hear me talk about when washing a car, especially if you've had a car that you've brought to me or another detailer in the country and spend a lot of time doing paint correction. You spend a lot of money doing that. You don't want to ruin that by just being, in my opinion, kind of lazy washing it and taking it through a brush car wash or just, you know, not having the right tools for the trade. This thing is looking great, fully clean. Do you like the blue any better now? Nope. <laughs> but I know a lot of people do. I think it's a really unique color. Um, I wish it had more metallic in it, personally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it seems like almost sporadic metallic on this. It's not very like heavy deep, but this thing is just dripping water absolutely everywhere. Yeah, I'm noticing that. Yeah, like literally everywhere. This would be, honestly, these details on these are gonna be a pain, especially these roof rails are just gonna sit here and hold so much water up in here. Yeah. So really gonna need to get the uh, blow dryer out on yep, those. Yep, definitely. So we're finished now with the wash process on the Rivian R1S. I think it looks pretty spectacular. I know Kyle, we're kind of going back and forth. He doesn't love this color. I mean, I love the R1S. But it's, just, it's just the spec isn't for me, but yeah. that's why they make different ones. And uh, yeah. you know, I know we've met so many people who have come up to us and were like, this is the exact spec I want. So yeah. very popular spec here. Mm -hmm, definitely. I'd like to see these in limestone in person because that's probably my second choice. It's just, yeah. It, nonetheless really really cool so i hope you guys really enjoyed this if you have any questions below we're going to try and put all of the chemicals we use below some tools here and there it'll be in the link in the description um, comment what do you think do you like a clean rivian or a really really dirty one i think it's cool to have both and that's kind of the important thing with this is if you get these protected rinse it off have a nice clean truck and then just blast it up a canyon 
yeah, hopefully this helps some R1S owners uh, ease the burden of waiting for their truck, a little wash thing. This one unfortunately goes back to Rivian in a couple days, but at least it'll go back a little bit cleaner. Thanks, Colton. Thank you.